In today's episode of The Insect Hunter, we're going to be hunting down hummingbird moths. So let's see if we can find some of these interesting and beautiful insects. So the whole reason I wanted to make this episode on hummingbird moths is because it's one of the insects that I used to collect when I was a kid. One of the first ones actually that I probably ever collected. So since I was at home, I decided, hey, let's try and make a video uh, collecting hummingbird moths. Now, when I was a kid, these things would come to these flowers that are called evening primroses. And these only open up at night and they stay open for one night. They open up relatively fast. They're one of those plants you can actually see moving. It's just really uh, awesome to watch them kind of open up. But So I was at home, so I thought, let's try and see if we can find some of these hummingbird moths. They get their name because they fly a lot like hummingbirds. They have such a unique, interesting flying pattern. As you can see here, they're just able to hover around and move with so much grace. It's just very beautiful and interesting, but they've got to have tons of calories to be able to keep that kind of movement. So they're always visiting flowers, almost always. So I decided if I was going to try and hunt them down, I would see if I could find the caterpillars for you guys of this moth. And as I was looking for the caterpillars, I found some stilt bugs. So I thought I would show those to you guys while I was out collecting because it's always fun to find interesting insects. These are a lot like walking sticks and they're just beautiful, interesting little little bugs and uh, very fragile. I've used them in collections before. They have these long spindly legs that will just break so easily. So if you ever find some of these, be very careful. And here's one of the baby ones, which is still kind of cute, but he's not quite got those long distinct legs and uh, body parts like the other ones. So I decided to continue searching for the caterpillars and I was successfully able to find one. It took me a couple weeks to find one of them and these are the caterpillars of the hummingbird moth and they are called hornworms because they have that horn at the end of their uh, abdomen and they're I mean those horns don't actually serve a purpose other than kind of as a defensive strategy to scare away predators so they're kind of freaked out by it but as you can see they have strong suction cups they can hold on real tight to your hand and this one was very large um, just a large caterpillar very long and they have this real rubbery feel to them that can almost be kind of cold to the touch if they're not quite warmed up yet and as you can see he's really holding on tight there with those suction cups when I tried to pull him off my finger I thought he was gonna rip in half or something so one really cool thing about these caterpillars and all caterpillars is that you can normally see uh, in their segments you see it's divided into different segments different chunks and if you look very closely at the different segments, you can see these tiny orange spots, which you can see right there. Those are the spiracles, which are how insects breathe. So those let in the air, and the insects can get air that goes throughout their body so they can carry out their functions as normal, which is normally mostly just feeding. Here is a caterpillar feeding. Like other caterpillars, these can eat tons of leaf material. This one was just eating tons of leaf material over a short period of time. I was very impressed by it. And it actually would eat a bunch, and then it would sit there and rest for a while because it's got to process that plant material, and then it would move on and uh, <clears throat> move on to other things and try and find other leaf material. So this was just a real treat to find this huge hornworm, and that gave me hope that I was going to be able to find uh, many of the adults so they must have been nearby uh, this year. So the adults feed by um, using this long curly cue like straw that comes out of their mouth. You can see it. I'll slow this video down. You can see it right there just sticking into the flower. They're sticking it in there. They're probing to see what's in there. And they'll um, suck up nectars and different things like that. But that's how you want to catch these. That's how I normally do is as they're sticking um, that into the flower, they're kind of distracted so you can get in there with your hands and try and grab it. I was kind of struggling to be able to actually do this because I had to move the camera myself and then I had to get over there to the insect and then try and get my hands over it. So I was really struggling doing this and I wanted to do it at night when they were going to the primrose plants, but the lighting just wasn't quite what I wanted to be able to get the best shot. So as you can see here, it's kind of blurry and 
not very colorful. So that just wasn't working out for me. So I wasn't able to do that at first. Um, catching them with your hands is something that I just love to do, but it could damage them. As you can see here, some of its scales came off. And so the best way to do it is to use a jar. I just love catching them by hand because it's so exciting to just connect with nature and connect with these insects because I just find them so fascinating. So I have a hard time not doing that. But as you can see, they move around very quickly. So you normally have a couple seconds to get your hands over them or to get a jar over them when they're moving around from flower to flower. But what finally ended up happening is the other day when we had a warm day, I was just sitting outside watching the flowers in the afternoon and one of them flew over and landed in the tomato patch. So I don't know if it was trying to lay eggs or what it was doing for sure or if it was just resting. But once it landed over there, I got my jar and I hurried and I got it over it as quick as I could. And then I finally got it in the jar so I could show you guys me collecting one. This is what I've been trying to collect this whole time. wasn't really the experience I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you that awesome experience of grabbing one with my hands maybe next year, but I did catch one and this one was just beautiful. I love the colors on these things. They've just got these beautiful stripes and lines and white and brown and just got that little bit of pink in there. It's just very beautiful. They're beautiful, awesome insect. That was the one I was able to catch to show you guys. Thanks for coming along this adventure with me. If you have any comments or questions, leave those below and like and subscribe so you can tune in next time for our next adventure with all things insects.